thanks to Mother Nature and a pitching change, we went from three plays yesterday down to one. But guess what? We won it. Thank you, Mark Zinno, on the Seattle Mariners yesterday afternoon. A 16-5 and run now on the morning wager since it is Thursday. We'll be talking a little NFL in a little bit. Maybe a little college, too. Yes, there is a college game. Yes. So, but first, the Major yes, League Baseball thing. season. Yeah. Yes. No, well, 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 I'm going to get one. to you. Okay. Well, I, sometimes I don't know. You you kind of drag out the intro a little sometimes. You know, it you, depends just... what I have. I, I have. There's a lot going on in my head here. Okay. You'll All get right. featured. Don't worry. That's Mark Zeno in case if you're unclear. <laughs> All Brian right, Power we have Auto. some Major League Baseball plays to say. That's all I wanted to say is that the Major League Baseball season is winding down, and we'll be talking about that as per usual. That's all I wanted to say. Oh. Okay. Well, listen, when you're pouring a gallon of information into a shot glass of a brain, uh, there's a lot for Brian Power to deal with there. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, by the way, <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Ranieri from the cheap seats. Um, yeah. Always bet against the drunk hungover team. We've learned that. That is now a, a oh. full handicapping method. And it, if you actually read my write-up yesterday, all I wrote is the Astros are still drunk from last night. And that was enough for me. So it ended up working out. I just want to point out one thing real quick. Um, why are the Baltimore Orioles torturing me? Can, I, can, we, well. explain, <laughs> can we explain <laughs> why they're torturing me? Because it's yes. a lock they're ending up with 90 wins. It is a yes. lock. They're ending up with 90 wins when I need them to have 91 to go over 90 and a half. It is an absolute lock that they are going to win 90 games. This is complete torture at this point. Now, they partied after clinching a wild card two nights yeah. ago, and th yeah. they did come back and win. They beat uh, your New York Yankees. Again, it was going to be Nasty Nestor. He gets, he's hurt. He's out. Marcus Stroman got absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree last night. Wasn't, the it, Orioles great that somebody, wasn't it great that you posted a video of the, the Mariners win and somebody asked the question in response going, hey, Zeno BP, what do you think the difference between, you know, do, do you still like the, the Yankees with, with Nestor out and Stroman in? I said to everybody, I go, does it really make a difference? They both suck. Like if the Yankees are going to win, it's because they're going to score nine runs. So that's the only way this thing breaks down. Well, they lost scoring seven. We have a tremendous starting pitching matchup on paper tonight of Corbin Burns and Garrett Cole. You, leaving no stone unturned, have found a number at FanDuel that you want to hit here for the first five. It's a rogue, a rogue four and a half hanging out there. Uh, first five uh, under four and a half. Look, Garrett, uh, sorry. Let's start this again. First five under four and a half. Corbin Burns has faced the Yankees once this year already. Uh, it was a game he was spectacular in. He went six innings, gave up just four hits, um, and only allowed two runs. The two runs came off of one of those four hits, which was a two-run shot by Oswaldo Cabrera. Everybody else batted a combined like 160 against Corbin Burns. So I expect to see that again. Did a great job in shutting down the Yankees lineup. Not worried about that happening here again. Garrett Cole uh, has been a little bit of an up and down, you know, situation since he's come back uh, off the IL. His ERA at home not good. Five oh one ERA uh, in eight home starts and a two six one ERA. However, um, you know he did well against the Orioles in both of his starts this year. When he came back, his first start off the IL was just four innings, only gave up three hits and two runs. Uh, struck out five. His next start, he went six innings, five hits, one run. So, and one start on the road against the Orioles, one start at home. So he's been good against them um, in, in his two starts there. I'm not going to overthink this. We've had a lot of runs scored in the first two games of this series. I think we'll get a, a, a two pitchers duel here, and maybe, maybe somehow, maybe the uh, the Yankees will be able to hang on and actually clinch this thing, and the torture will be over for me with the Baltimore Orioles. Who, um, oh by the way, uh, at, at this point in time. Let's just recap this thing. They have 88 wins and 70 losses. They need to go three and one the rest of the way to finish 91 and 71 for me to hit this bet. They have three games left against the Twins after this one. So even though I'm betting that the Yankees or thinking the Yankees or hoping the Yankees will clinch this thing, am I going to be that upset if the Orioles win it? No, I'm not. But this is a small form of torture here. Run over to FanDuel, bet that under four and a half, says Mark Zinno on the Orioles and the Yankees. All right, my half of the double play, 
from the AL East, I'll take you to the NL West. Padres and Dodgers. Dodgers can clinch the division with the win tonight. Guess what? I'm taking the other team. I'm taking San Diego. You know why I'm taking San Diego, Mark? Because Walker Bueller stinks. All right. I just want to bet against him. I've taken the over in his last two start, two of his last three starts. I've taken the over, I should say. I uh, had a win and a push there. Let's look at Bueller's numbers, shall we? Okay, he allows two homers and, and three and a half walks per nine innings. His FIP is just absolutely awful. If he qualified, I think he'd be dead last in all of uh, uh, baseball in FIP. Uh, Joe Musgrove, he's FIP? starting for San Diego. Fielding independent pitching. FIP. God, you're such a freaking... Everybody freak. talks FIP. You don't talk FIP? No, I talk English. You know, the language I learned. Not acronym. Not abbreviation. FIP. You're a fit. You don't. You've never said ERA on the show before. You've never said uh, WHIP on the show before. Those, yes. are, those are terms in common usage. Okay, like so limo. Fit. Everyone's been saying fit for years. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Can I please? Yeah. Go All ahead. All right. Let me tell you something about the San Diego Padres and L.A. Dodgers. Okay. Both teams score more runs on the road. Okay, his runs per game. Is that an allowable stat I can quote there, Zeno? Uh, so this game being in Chavez Ravine actually benefits San Diego. This is, of course, the rubber match here. San Diego won the opener. Dodgers win last night. I just think uh, the bullpen edge goes to the Padres. I think the offensive edge goes to the Padres. And most of all, the starting pitching edge goes to the Padres with Musgrove over Bueller. Walker, I just think Walker Bueller is the weak link of their rotation, and I just will play against him in any way, shape, or form I can. San Diego plus money, plus 105 on the one end. Mark, since the All-Star break, San Diego's only lost back-to-back -back games three times. They are 41-17 wow. and 17 their last 58 games. I'll put one more feather in your cap. The Padres had the absolute lowest strikeout rate on the road of any team in baseball by two percentage points, which is pretty massive. So uh, they don't strike out a lot. Uh, I like where your head is. Interesting, though, uh, you're the Padres. If you win this, you're a game out of first in the NL West. For the, you talk about how much better they are on the road. I'm not sure that they want to win the NL West. I think they're better off not winning the NL West and going on the road through the entire postseason. Just my two cents. Well, the, the the only thing is, if they win the West, they would get a first round buy. That 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 there is some benefit, obviously there. If they would I be a top so. the top three seeds, yeah. So that, I th I think that would be beneficial, perhaps. But I see you. I see what you. You know, um, I, I don't know the way this team's playing. The, they're live to win the World Series. I know we both think that, and I bet that. So let's go. Um, real quick. Your hatred for David Peterson didn't come through yesterday because the Mets and Braves got rained out. We have an official doubleheader on Monday between these two teams. I actually cannot wait from this from a betting perspective. I mean, I, I'm so curious because if it's a win and get in situation between the Mets and the Braves on Monday, like what if the Mets need one win and the Braves need two, right? And so they play the first game. If the Braves go up six, nothing early, like is the line for the second game going to be live? Cause typically we don't see that double headers, right? Odds makers set the line for one. They set the one for the other, and it doesn't change, if at all, until the first game is completely over. But, you know, if the Mets are up 6 nothing in the first game and they need to win one, the Braves need to win two, does the line in the second game automatically change? Because I would bet against the Mets in game two, right? Like, I, yeah. I don't, I'm so mm -hmm. curious as to how this is going to unfold and what's going to happen. I mean, obviously, we have a three-game series, you know, uh, th this weekend to get through first before all this stuff happens. But this is a crazy scenario. You know what? If, if both the Braves and Mets go into Monday needing a win to make the playoffs, do you know what I would do if I were one of the two teams? I'd bring a large bag of cash and say, hey, guys, go to the other dugout and say, let's split the pair and, and we'll win. That's what I would do. <laughs> okay. What an asinine thought process. Uh, anyway, but nonetheless, you just took everything. I I said, you. Everything good I just said, you ruined. <laughs> just say it. That's what I would do. Right. That's Monday. Today's today's Thursday. You know what Thursday means? We on? Yeah, we got football. You know what today? You know what? what it means we have football. The Cowboys and your New York Giants, Juban. Uh, they won last week against uh, the Cleveland they Browns. Suck. Yeah, I know. 
Yeah, uh, the Cowboys haven't been doing too good either. They're all, both teams only win this year was against the Cleveland Browns. These two teams. Fun fact. The Cowboys have lost two straight since then. Uh, this line reopened lower. The look ahead line was seven. I think what the look ahead and then it was reopened. What four, four and a half Cowboys have taken money. I assume that that's probably public money. Total sitting 45, 45 and a half, depending on your book. Uh, we are looking at a player prop tonight, yes. Mark Zeno, and uh, this is my interest because uh, you you told me uh, before we started the show, Devin Singletary only has, what, 16 rushing attempts in his first two games? Well, no, he's got 16 in each of the last two. He had 10 in the opener. Oh, so, okay, um, okay. He, he, is, he is at a number right now at 14 and a half rushing attempts that uh, you and I are both very comfortable with uh, here in this game. Now, I'll add a couple of things. One, I think this game goes over the total. Um, and the reason I think that is because the Cowboys defense isn't very good. Uh, and Brian Dable will run the ball first. And until Dallas can prove that they can stop the run, he won't make Daniel Jones have to do that thing called throw. Because what we have a good sample size of is that when Daniel Jones has to throw the ball, things go bad for the New York Giants. So um, I think they'll lean heavily on Singletary. Who in the last two weeks, again, has been a big part of the offense, a big part of the scoring. He scored a touchdown in each of the last two weeks. He's broken off at least a 20-yard run in each of the last two weeks. So starting to gain a little bit more confidence from the coaching staff um, and starting to really make an impact in the offense. I think we see that continue against the Dallas run defense that, again, is also struggling mightily to stop the run. Um, and it's, it's really kind of crazy uh, where they are in this thing. That said as well, I'll add a couple more things. The Cowboys have won 13 of the last 14 in one game in 21 or the 2020 season. Actually, it was January 3rd, 2021. But other than that, it have gone over the total. So in the one, one of the four that sit on the total, the Giants actually won. So there's that. But I don't think the Giants defense can stop the Cowboys defense. the entire damn game like they did the last two. So uh, I think they'll be able to score, and I think that this will be a little bit of a different uh, setup for for the, the, the Cowboys here and keep this thing competitive, which should keep Devin Singletary running the ball. Malik Neighbors, I think, is someone else. I mean, you talk about Daniel Jones passing the ball. I mean, it's Neighbors or bust in the passing game. Um, I, I do, Would you look at him over six and a half catches? Is that does that sound something that I, can, I mean? That's all, seven receptions is a lot for a game. Even someone as talented yeah. and is pretty much the Dallas. Dallas's cornerbacks uh, that they've, they've they've got an injury. They've got some injuries in the secondary, so it'll be interesting to see um, you know neighbors in the passing game how he does because it's obviously that's who Jones is looking for pretty much exclusively. Yeah, well, I mean, he's the only guy on the term on the team that <laughs> actually deserves the moniker of wide receiver. The rest of them are just guys. Just guys who happen to be wearing numbers in the 80s. Single-digit numbers I'll running out for pass. I don't know. I'll throw another good good, uh, good uh, stat at, at you. Cowboys defense last in adjusted line yards. That's another one for you. I just I know, I know you just love to dig deep on these stats, and you love when I, I mean, start bringing these uh, things up. About, adjusted about, line yards. There's something about an EPA or a CPA or getting your taxes done, yeah. whatever stat that is, uh, you know, expected. Adjusted EPA. line yards. All right. Anyway, Devin Singletary, over 14 and a half rushing attempts yes. is our go best yes. bet today. Um, there is a college game, but let's talk about this first. There is a special offer, of course, still going on at wagertalk.com. If you buy a three-month all-access pass, what will we do? Well, we'll throw a fourth month of service in for free. You head out over either to my page or Mark's page for that deal right now. Again, it's less than $49 per week, less than $7 per day. You get 120 days worth of service. Uh, Mark, I'll let uh, you uh, tell everyone you've got going to your page in just a second. I'll tell everyone, number one, in, uh, I am number one in football this season, 68%, NFL plus college. A perfect 6-0 and with NFL sides this season. I will have three for Sunday. So there you go, wt.buzz slash BP. What do you got going on, man? Uh, we will we will have a play in the Thursday night football game, possibly a play in the in the college game. I, I the numbers have moved a little bit on me, so I gotta 
do a little bit of a deeper dive into research here. But we won our lone baseball play yesterday. So wt.buzz slash mz back on the winning side once again. You can get all that stuff right up after the show's over. All right. You mentioned there is a college game, and boy, what a doozy it is. Army and Temple. Yes. A game only a better could love. Uh, Temple's very bad. Uh, you know, now laying double digits on the road with a service academy can be tricky. Uh, what, what do you, is there something that you, is there an angle that you're looking at here for this game, Mark? I got nothing on this game. It was a pretty easy pass for me, but um, is there something that maybe caught your eye or, or, or viewers should be I mean, paying look, attention to for Army Temple? When these lines posted, uh, I had a conversation with a mutual friend of ours on Monday, um, and I said, Army minus 13 and a half feels short. Um, and I, the line stayed on. And this is sometimes the benefit of just waiting. I didn't lock in early. Um, you just wait, wait, wait. And then yesterday, for whatever reason, the line dropped down to 12 and a half, even 12 in certain spots uh, for the Black mm. Knights, who are 3 0, 2 0 in conference. Uh, and they're winning their stats by an average of 180 yards per game. Um, you know, Army is 4-1 and one ATS as a road chalk of 12 or less. Um, Temple is lousy as a double-digit home dog, 3-15 and 15 straight up, 7-11 and 11 against the number in that category. Uh, they won a game last week uh, on a 64-yard field goal by Maddox Trujillo. Um, I don't think <laughs> that that's going to, 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 to help them um, in this sense because uh, even though Temple won at home, um, they're facing a run first team and Temple's 107th in the nation in rushing defense. So I still like Army. The lo- the number bothers me a little bit. Why would anybody be betting on Temple? Right? Like that's my biggest issue. Like wh- who in the world is going, I've earned this money. This is this is my hard work right here in my hand. I'd like to go invest in it on Temple University to play a football game. Like that doesn't seem like it makes any sense to me. So the line move is is sort of unnerving me a little bit uh, in reference to why this is happening. But all signs point to two things, Army and the over. It's all correlated. I think the game goes over the total because Army is going to score 35 points in this game and, and you get, you know, 35-17 and they win. I mean, that's, you know, that, that, that's what it feels like to me. Um, I could possibly look at an Army team total if I really felt like that may be a way to go, but I'll have to do a little bit of a deeper dive. But I, I, it's a hard lean towards Army. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to get to the window on it. If I do, it'll be in my package over at wt.buzz slash mz. So there's that. Awesome. Army, perfect 3-0 and against the number this year, in addition to being 3-0 and straight up. You go back to last year, Mark, seven straight wins for the cadets, five straight covers. Army getting it done. A salute there, a tip of the cap. Third week in a row, they're playing a team called the Owl. Name the Owls. They've beaten FAU and Rice each of the last two weeks. Can that's they make it three for three against Temple? We Brian shall see. Power would have on his tongue. I mean, th- that is, I, I, and I'm sure <laughs> in your deep dive of handicapping, you went and went, oh, they're facing the Owls for the third week in a row. They've won the first two against the Owls. They have to be able to win the third because that is Brian Power's handicapping st- strategy in a nutshell. Right up there with, I don't like this person as a head coach. <laughs> never met him. Never spoke to him. Have no idea anything about his past. I just don't like the way he looks. So Brian Power will bet against the team because he doesn't like the head coach. I also said I would bring a bag of cash to make the playoffs on the yes. last day of the regular that's season today. So that's just a guy recap of today's also, show. This, <laughs> and I just want to expose you for, for the morning wager. 68% football. There we go. 68% yeah, football this year, this is where 68% gets you, picking the most random sh- stuff that you could find as a reason to bet on a game. Brian Power does it, and the lucky bastard hits. So good for him. I, on the other hand, am unlucky. Look at me. You're, I'm lucky because I get to do a show with you every day. All right, oh, that's going to do it for today's show. All right. You sure. Give us a like. We would really appreciate it here on the Morning Wagers. We continue to dole out the free winners Monday through Friday here on the Wage Talk YouTube We're channel. We are 16-5 and five run on the show the last six days. Comment down below with your favorite plays for Thursday. We've given you a lot, Major League Baseball, NFL, and college. And, of course, if you're not subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel, you need to do that right now. Is there, like, a show leaderboard of all the sh- things that are given out on the show and how the show does? Because I think we're the highest. I don't know that. I, I, there's a lot I know. Third week in a row playing the owl.
Marks, you know, cash is tickets. My favorite part of the song because it's a lie. 